Hey guys, this is the EC Service Tech, and today what we're looking at is charging a 410A package unit that's low on refrigerant charge. If you look at this gauge right here, we're at right about 60 PSI, which means that our saturated temperature inside the evaporator cool is about an 8. So what we're going to do is we're going to quickly go ahead and attach our 410A bottle. We're going to flip it upside down. We're going to open it up. Zero at the scale after that liquid inside stops moving around. All right. Now we're going to purge the air out of the lines. All right. All right, right there. Just a little bit. We don't have to go crazy with it. All right, so now we got to get some refrigerant in there. So we have our uh, fast charge cylinder, all right? It is a uh, liquid vaporizer right here. We need to get the vapor pressure up a little bit. So though we have liquid with Fortune which is what we need to charge, as it goes into the vaporizer, it's able to uh, do a phase change from liquid to vapor, at least somewhat. And what that's for is it's for to save the compressor. All right, you have to have uh, vapor going into the compressor. It's a vapor compressor, not a liquid compressor. If you have liquid going in there, you're going to end up hurting it. All right, so we're trying to get this in. So far, we've only put 0.5 ounces in, roughly. All right, I'm going to put some more in here. We have two ounces in there right now. We've been able to at least get the evaporator coil temperature up to 14 degrees. If you look at a saturated uh, pressure and temperature right here, what you do is you follow the temperature, which the temperature right now is at 72 PSI. Follow that over to the saturated temperature, and you're going to be able to find it. Right now it's at 70, so we're looking at about 14 degrees uh, temperature inside the middle of the evaporator coil of this unit right here. So we got to get that pressure up um, somewhere in the neighborhood of uh, 35 to 48 or something like that. But basically, we need to check the charge once we get it up high enough. Once we get over into at least 32, 34, that's when we can go ahead and start checking the subcooling for 410A. All right. This is 410A unit. It's a packaged unit. All right. So everything is right here, right in this area. There's a port on the vapor side all right and then there's a port on the discharge the way that this thing was built there's no there is no um liquid port they just give you a discharge port and then inside the rating plate they give you um, a sub cooling rating that's actually lower than what normally you're used to you know you're used to usually 8 to 12 degrees well uh this this unit is calling for 19. 19 degrees of subcooling. I have my temperature probe on the liquid line before it gets to the TXV because it's all compact, you know. It's before it gets down to here and, and goes into the evaporator coil. So I have it right there, all right. That's what the unit's telling me to do. Check the liquid line temperature, all right. And you're checking your discharge pressure which is right here all right so that's the hottest part in the whole system so of course it's going to be um, higher in temperature all right so that's why they're giving you a larger sub point rating now if we did not have this liquid vaporizer you would not want to open the handle up that long you would just want to be opening it like this and then shutting it real quick all right um, or you would want to just barely open it up just barely so it almost acts like a metering device inside well I'm sorry right in here so it acts like a metering device right there because you're only letting a tiny tiny little bit of refrigerant through that allows a pressure drop to occur and uh, that's when it phase changes from liquid to vapor but since we have this liquid vaporizer here we're a lot safer now compared to if we did not have this in especially when we have to put a decent amount of refrigerant in after fixing the leak here all right, 
Uh, we've put in nine ounces so far. And we're going to keep going here. Once again, our pressure right here for Fortune A, if you follow this in, we are at 83 PSI G right here on the vapor side. Bring this in to about 23 degrees in the middle of the evaporator coil. Once again, once we get the subcooling up higher, that's when we can go ahead and start checking the subcooling rating. All right? So we're just going to keep charging it until we can get it high enough to where that evaporator coil will not freeze on us. All right? We're at 9.9 .9 ounces right now. Just say we were to check the subcooling on this. Um, we have 70, 76, 76 or 77 degrees on the liquid side for saturated uh, temperature. 70, we'll call it 77, minus 72.5 is not a whole lot. That's only, um, what did I say, 77 minus that, that's only four and a half degrees, four and a half degrees. All right. If the subcooling is low, then you need to add refrigerant to increase the subcooling. What's going to happen is this gauge is going to go higher and this temperature is going to go lower. That should happen once we get this vapor up into that, at least that 35 uh, degree saturated range right here. All right, we're at 10.7 ounces in there so far. Then we're going to keep going. All right, we're raising the head pressure as we're doing this because we're putting refrigerant into the low side. The 410A bottle is upside down and is coming in through the uh, service hose. It's coming in here and it's going into the low side. And we're protecting it with our liquid vaporizer right here. Twelve point five ounces. Quite a big Quite a big leak. All right, we are at 27 degrees still. And our subcoin rating is 76, about 76 degrees, minus 71.5. We're still at about uh, 4.5 degrees of subcoin. All right, we're going to continue adding our refrigerant in this unit. All right, so this is our TXV. All right, here's our distributor tubes down low, down down below. All right, so here you have your TXV, and the head uh, is actually insulated right here. This is our suction line. All right, and I don't know if you can make it out, but right up here they have the brazed in external equalization tube for the TXV. All right, this one right here. All right, and then you have the bulb tube that's actually mounted right behind uh, my multimeter that I'm using for temperature right now. All right, we're gonna give it a little suck here just to catch up with itself. Um, you know, when you put a lot of refrigerant in fast, you want to let it run for a decent amount of time. If you're concerned about it, you could shut it off, wait the five minutes before turning it back on so you don't hurt the compressor, turn it back on and check the charge again. All right. We are at roughly 77, 78 saturated temperature right here. The pressure is at 226 you follow it in, we're at 77 degrees saturated temp, saturated temp in the middle of the condenser coil. All right, this is the high side of the system right here. All right, that's the low side of the system. So this is in the condenser coil after the compressor. This is in the evaporator coil. All right, um, that's at least what the saturated temperature is correlating to. We are at 14.2 ounces of refrigerant. 